I'm Jacob and I'll be your Gen Y for this topic where we discuss what gamification is and examples of its effectiveness in today's information era. Gamification is a term first coined in 2002 which did not become commonly used until 2010 and means different things to different people. Among scholars, more and more common themes emerge within their definitions, differentiating gamification from games more and more precisely. Bayon describes the transfer of rewards or incentives aiming to engage users through goal achievement, positive outcomes and measurable progression from games into activities which Robson describes as existing or real world situations. These game mechanics are explored by CAP and can include a variety of characteristics including point systems, currency, levels, rewards, badges and achievements or unlockable and restricted areas. These all aim to develop a sense of progression or achievement and stimulate and encourage users to focus and perform well or revisit, repeat and retry to improve previous performances. CAP also describes the fundamental issue of gamification, which lends itself to many controversies in the digital media sector, engagement. Engagement becomes an issue with gamification when users of the platform participate for the wrong reasons. The real world element plays second fiddle to the narrative and results in substandard performance where the existing task has not been reflected in the rankings or scoring. Instances can arise where users are simply playing and not performing, but are still being rewarded from the gamified system. Quantitative measures may show an increase in productivity and performance, however the quality of completion suffers as a result of autonomy or repetition instead of engaging with the actual task. This being said, experts have noted that while motivation and engagement are mo major challenges within the American education system, particularly in impoverished areas, gamification can motivate disillusioned students to engage with the classroom and give teachers better tools to guide and reward students. By muddying the boundaries between formal and informal learning, teachers can inspire students to become lifelong learners and better reach those students who might otherwise be falling through the cracks. Similar to education, gamification of training is increasingly common and not just in large-scale simulations. The basis for a successful integration of a gamified training tool is again outlined by Carl Kapp, who recognises the need for repetition of information over a space of days and weeks to build on both memory and thought process. American professor John Dobson found that a series of retrieval quizzes used in series enhanced retention of previously tested materials by as much as 40%. This theory was implemented in a service we are all familiar with. McDonald's overhaul of their tilling system in the United Kingdom came to reflect an ever-changing menu, but created the issue where even more experienced members would be brought to their knees when taking orders, almost overnight, across thousands of stores. Delays and errors would cost McDonald's not just wasted product, but reduce customer satisfaction and severely affect their bottom line. Instead, a gamified tool was introduced where crew members could download a new private phone app and compete with themselves and others by taking customer conversation and converting them into till orders, all to keep the customers happy. Bonuses and levels reflected increasing complexity, but it was the power-ups earned through prolonged high performance which really drove up players' scores. Crew members who consistently delivered correct orders, beat the timer and maintained high customer satisfaction earned bonuses which gave them a competitive edge. Strong use of context and realism transferred these skills to the rollout of the new till systems. The results were an outstanding success. While the game was in no way mandatory, it was accessed 145,000 times in a year where 85% of crew members believed that the real experience came from use of training the game. Statistics showed that almost 8 seconds per order was saved an average increase in order size of 25 cents was observed and participating stores enjoyed an extra $30,000 per year in sales. Winning an e-learning and software award, the process of gamification came to little, at little expense to McDonald's, taking two developers a fortnight and $60,000 to implement. Many reasons likely contribute in the rise in gamification's implementation and success. And while integrating these systems into education and training may have expenses that aren't directly recoverable, some statistics cannot be ignored. A typical gamer spends between one and two hours playing daily. 40% of the time logged into Facebook is spent playing games. 79% of respondents in a survey of both corporate learners and university students said they would be more productive if their learning environment was more similar to a game. 
As technology grows, the population becomes increasingly disconnected with anything not digitalised. Children are now brought up in an era where anything is available at the touch and swipe of a finger. Learning is more short term as information doesn't need to be retained as much and outdated learning models become more and more obsolete. Games are easier to build than ever before. There are software programs that make building a simple game easy and quick. The average age of a person who plays video games is getting older and as these older people obtain positions of power within organisations, the stigma of games in corporations, the government and academic environments is waning. Gamification will likely become more and more common not only in learning and training, but in everyday aspects of life, including work, filling in forms and even reading books. Now completion of percentages are showing up in job applications and badges are being applied to the books I read on my ebook reader. If you take the time to recognise where elements of your life are being gamified or tools attached to menial tasks that are designed to increase your attention and engagement, you may notice how your life is becoming eerily similar to the futuristic lives expressed in pop culture as recently as the 90s. Doubt me? Try and check out old episodes of Noah and Saskia, an early 2000s ABC show, and you might believe me.